lesson four of A New Nation, American Independence. Our lesson today is called Declaring Independence. Before we can get started on today's lesson, we are going to review what we've learned so far. Let's get started. In the previous read aloud, you heard about the ride of Paul Revere and the shot heard around the world. I want you to think about what you learned about Paul Revere in the previous lesson. Okay, I want you to think of one word that describes him and the significance of his legendary ride. Okay. <clears throat> So, Paul Revere was a patriot. He was brave. He was important. Um, he's the reason why people were prepared when the British were coming, right? In that first battle at Lexington. Okay. All right. What did one if by land and two if by sea mean? It referred to the signal. One lantern meant the redcoats were coming by land, and two lanterns meant they were coming by sea. Okay. Who were the redcoats? The redcoats were the British soldier. And who were the minutemen? The minutemen were the um, militiamen from the colonies. That's right. What was the shot heard around the world? It was the beginning of fighting between the Redcoats and the Minutemen at Lexington that started the Revolutionary War. Why was Paul Revere's ride important? Yeah, he was being patriotic and he helped get the Minutemen prepared or ready to fight the British. Okay. So we're going to continue learning about some of the important events that led to the creation of our nation, the United States of America. I want you to listen carefully to find out how the colonists tried to save, or sorry, solve the problems caused by the shot heard around the world. News of the shot heard around the world spread throughout the colonies. Once again, the colonists sent, rep sent representatives to a meeting in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to discuss what had happened and decide what to do. What's a representative? A representative is someone to represent or talk for you at a meeting or some other kind of gathering, okay? The representatives at the Second Continental Congress were divided in their feelings about breaking away from Britain and becoming a completely independent nation. The word independent means not controlled by others. If the colonists became independent from Great Britain, they could decide things on their own. They wouldn't have to follow the rules of the king of Great Britain. But several more small battles in the Massachusetts colony convinced them that they needed an army and someone to serve as commander. General George Washington seemed to be the perfect choice to lead the army. He had fought to protect the colonies before and knew how the British fought. Dressed in his military uniform at the Continental Congress, he was respected by everyone and was easily elected as the commander-in-chief of the Continental Army. So George Washington would be in charge of the army created by the Continental Congress. Okay? Washington set off to join troops from across the colonies in Massachusetts, ready to meet the British in battle. Meanwhile, in the Continental Congress, uh, they continued to meet in Philadelphia. So they continued to have meetings during this time while George Washington was off getting um, the colonies ready to battle. <clears throat> Among the representatives was a man named Benjamin Franklin. Franklin, who was born in the colony of Massachusetts and then lived in the colony of Pennsylvania, had actually moved to London, England for a few years. He had gone there to speak out in Parliament against the unfair taxing of the American colonies and the fact that the Americans had no say in Parliament. So, remember, the Americans, they had no official representatives to speak out for them. That's why they were so frustrated when the British started taxing them, right? Because they were being taxed 
but they didn't have a say in where their tax money was going and how much they should be taxed, okay? So Franklin went there to see if he could get their voices heard. Even though he was not an official, a real representative, he did try to get the colonists' voices heard, okay? Benjamin Franklin was very good at arguing, and he was able to get the British to remove some of their taxes on the colonies. Benjamin Franklin had many British friends in London, but after the Boston Tea Party, an angry, an angry British Parliament began to dis distrust and dislike him. Why do you think the British Parliament started to dislike Franklin? Let's see. And so, in 1775, Franklin decided that it was time to return home, arriving in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, just in time for a second meeting of the Continental Congress. <clears throat> the other representatives... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me, guys. The other representatives were delighted to have someone there who had spent so much time on the other side of the ocean. He could help them decide what to do. The Continental Congress decided it was time to announce to Parliament and to the British King that the colonies no longer wanted to be a, great, a part of Great Britain. They wanted to declare themselves a free and independent nation. An official declaration would have to be written so that the Parliament and the King would take them seriously. Who would write this important Declaration of Independence or the statement to declare the colonists free from Great Britain? The members of the Continental Congress considered different people. Among those mentioned for the job was Thomas Jefferson, a 32-year-old representative from Virginia and one of the youngest men there. Jefferson had not been able to attend the First Continental Congress, but the representatives were all familiar with his powerful writing. Jefferson was elected to be its author. What would Jefferson do if he was going to be the author of the Declaration of Independence? What does that mean, if he's going to be the author? It means he's going to write it, okay? <clears throat> Thomas Jefferson went back to the rooms he was renting in Philadelphia, got out some paper, and scratched his head. He dipped his pen in ink and started writing. Remember, pens in those days, they didn't hold the ink. The pen had to be dipped in a bottle of ink. Sometimes he stopped and crossed out some words, then he went on. He knew a lot of important people were going to read this, so he had to make it good. Every morning for 17 days, he got up at dawn, got to work writing and rewriting to make sure his work was his best work. The Continental Congress liked Thomas Jefferson's work. Benjamin Franklin, among others, changed a word or two here or there, but most of the words remained those of young Jefferson. On July 4, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was approved by a vote of the Continental Congress. It was sent to a printing shop that very night. Riders headed out across the countryside with copies. In town squares all over the colonies, people gathered to hear Thomas Jefferson's words read aloud. One part is still read again and again today. I want you to listen to a part of our Declaration of Independence, and then I'm going to explain what it means. Okay, here we go. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights. Among, uh, rights. Among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. So those words mean that nobody is born any better than anyone else and that all people all over the world have the same rights, such as the right to live, the right to liberty, which means freedom, and the right to be happy. We still celebrate this important event every 4th of July, and you could call it the birth or the birthday of the United States. The 4th of July is now a national holiday to celebrate the Declaration of Independence and declaring freedom from Great Britain. So what did the Declaration of Independence do, guys? Think about those words, declare, which is in declaration, and independent, which is in independence. It said that the colonies were now going to be their own nation. They were no longer ruled by Great Britain. Okay. 
So who was the representative who went to Great Britain, was very good at arguing, and got the British to remove some of the taxes that they had put on the colonies? Benjamin Franklin. <clears throat> what important decisions were made at the Second Continental Congress? George Washington was chosen as the commander of chief in the Continental Army. And their representatives decided to declare themselves a free and independent nation by writing the Declaration of Independence. Now, who was chosen to write the Declaration of Independence? Thomas Jefferson! Why do you think he was chosen to be the author? He was a great writer. Do you remember, a, um, I don't know if it was last lesson or maybe two lessons ago, we learned about the th the, all three of these men, Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, and George Washington. And when we were talking about those three, I had mentioned that Thomas Jefferson was an amazing writer. Okay, So that's why they wanted him to write it, because they knew so many people were going to read this document. Okay, I mean, think about it. We're like, what? Uh, about 2,000, almost three, well, 2,000 years later. No, not 2,000. <laughs> about, sorry guys, my math is, my math is being distracted by the kitty who is chasing a light in the apartment. We are about 300, four, close to four. No, 350 years later, and we're still reading this document. Pretty cool, right? All right. Uh, where was I? See, I get distracted too sometimes. How do you think the colonists felt when they first heard the Declaration of Independence? How do you think they felt? They were probably really excited, right? They finally get what they want, except for maybe the loyalists. The loyalists who still wanted to be under the king's rule might not have been too happy about it, but we'll see. What do we celebrate each 4th of July? Our independence, the signing of the Declaration of Independence, or the United States' birthday. <clears throat> what is something that happens on the 4th of July to celebrate our nation's birthday? Fireworks, yeah. How do you know this? Did you hear about it in the read aloud or did you get this information from the picture? Yeah, you could have gotten it from a picture or you could have gotten it from you yourself experiencing it, okay? What do you think of when you hear the words, these words from the Declaration of Independence? We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. I think about how all people are equal and they all have the right to live, the right to be free, and the right to pursue what they believe will make them happy, right? All right, let's do our word work, okay? Your word for the day is independent. In the read aloud, you heard me say, the representatives to the Second Continental Congress were divided in their feelings about breaking away from Britain and becoming a completely independent nation. Say the word independent with me. You can whisper voice it, monster voice it, mouse voice it, however you want. Independent. 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 Independent means not being controlled by others. Canada, the United States of America, and Mexico are three independent nations on the continent of North America. Okay. Independent can also be used to, des to describe a person. An independent person is able to take care of himself or herself. Okay. They don't need their mom or their dad or their grandma or their grandpa to take care of them. You guys are not independent yet, but eventually when you're grown-ups, you will be. So what is the word we've been talking about? Independent. All right. So, if an, ind an independent person does things for himself or herself, and a dependent person relies on someone else to do it for them, I want you to think about those two words. Independent and dependent. So, your mom 
or your dad or your grandma or your grandpa, they might be independent. So they can do stuff for themselves, right? You, as a kid, are still dependent on them, meaning you depend on them to help you, okay? They might even be helping you do your, um, your classwork right now. So I'm going to give you a couple of different scenarios, and you're going to tell me if these are things that you are independent at or dependent at. So these might be different for you than somebody else in your class, okay? And they might be different than the person sitting next to you, okay? But I want you to say I am independent on uh, in that task or I depend or I am dependent on someone to help me do that. So tying your shoes. If you can tie your shoes then you would say I am independent at tying my shoes. If you cannot tie your shoes by yourself yet you're going to say I am dependent on someone to help me do that. Okay because you are depending on somebody else to help you. Washing your clothes. So if you do your own laundry, you're going to say, I am independent when I do that. If you do not wash your own clothes, if your mama or your daddy or your brother or your sister or your grandma or your grandpa or your aunt or your uncle or anybody else does that for you, you're going to say, I am dependent on someone to help me do that. All right. Fixing your breakfast. You try. So, if you can fix your own breakfast, you're going to say, I am independent at fixing my own breakfast. If you still need help fixing your own breakfast, you can say, I am dependent on someone to help me do that. Reading a book. If you can read, you're going to say, I am independent at doing that. If you can't read yet and you're still learning, you can say, I am dependent on someone to help me do that. All right, getting dressed. I think I know the answer for all of you on this one. At least I hope so. Most of you should have said, I am independent when I do that. All right, guys. The word we were talking about was independent. Independent means not controlled by others it means you can do it by yourself you don't need help okay i hope you enjoyed this read aloud and that you learned some cool things about the declaration of independence and how our nation became an independent nation i will see you next time and i hope you enjoyed bye